Hello everyone, happy to see you here, welcome back to my channel. Today we have a very interesting cubic equation, a cube minus a square equal to 18. Of course you can write your solution in the comments below and then we will check our answers. So first of all let's write this 18 on the left side. So this is our first, first step. So we have a cube minus a square minus 18 and equal to equal to zero. This is our first step. There are a lot of ways how can we solve this equation, but I'm going to show you this one. First of all, instead of this 18, let's write 27 minus 9. And a lot of students may be asking, why do you choose uh, this expression 27 minus 9? Just wait, wait a few seconds. So we have a cube minus a square minus, instead of this 18, let's write 27 minus 9, yeah, 27 minus 9 equal to 0. Right now let's open our parentheses, so we have a cube minus a square minus 27 and plus and plus 9 equal to equal to zero. And right now, why do I choose 27 and 9? Because right here we have cube and square and 27 and 9 are really great constant for us because uh, 27, for example, 27 can be written as 3 times 3 times 3. So we can write this 27 as 3 cube and 9 can be written as, I hope you understand it, 3 times 3. So we can write this uh, 9 as 3 square. So right now, instead of this 27, let's write 3 cube instead of this 9, let's write 3 square. So let's do it. So we have a cube minus a square minus, instead of this 27, let's write 3 cube, 3 cube, and instead of this 9, let's write 3 square. So plus 3 square plus 3 square equal to equal to 0. And right now let's look at this question from a, from another perspective. What do we have? A cube and we have 3 cubes. So we have cubes and we also have a square and we have 3 squares. So we also have mm, squares. So right now let's group our cubes and our squares together. So first of all our cubes, a cube minus 3 cube, a cube minus 3 cube, and our squares minus a square minus 3 square a square minus 3 square equal to 0. So I really hope you understand my solution until this moment. It's also really important that you understand how can we get this, uh, how do we get these expressions. Okay, right now let's look at this question from a different perspective. What do we have right here? We have two parentheses and this parenthesis is called difference of cubes. This parenthesis we can call as difference of, of squares. So right now Let's uh, remember this formula from school. These are our school formulas. First formula, difference of cubes. So we have a cube minus b cube. Yeah, a cube minus b cube. So right here we have a minus b, a minus b. And we have second parenthesis, a square plus a b and plus b square, plus b square. So this is our first formula. We can easily apply this formula right here, difference of, uh, of cubes. Another formula difference of squares. All known formula, everyone knows about it. So we have a square minus b square equal to a minus b, a minus b times a plus b. So we know everything, we remember, we learn everything. So this is our school knowledge. And right now let's apply these formulas, cubes right here, squares right here. So let's see, let's see what will happen. Uh, let's start, for example, with cubes. Yeah, we have in the first parenthesis, this is our cube. So let's start with cubes. So we have a minus 3, a minus 3. And in another parenthesis, a square plus 3a and plus and plus 9. In another parenthesis, difference of, of squares. So we have a minus 3, a minus 3 and a plus 3. Okay, I really hope you understand how can we apply these, uh, these formulas. If you have a problems with it, you can easily practice these two formulas and everything will be great. Right now, let's look at this question from a different perspective. We have a minus 3 and we have a minus 3, so we can easily factor this a minus 3 as a common expression, yeah? So let's do it right now. We can easily factor it. So we have a minus 3 in the beginning, a minus 3 in the beginning. And in another parenthesis, we have a square plus 3a plus 9, yeah, from here, first one, plus 9, and from here we have a plus 3, so minus a plus 3, a plus 3, yeah, equal to, equal to 0. Really great. The next thing, let's simplify this expression right here. We can actually get rid of this parenthesis without any problems. So we have a minus 3, a minus 3, and in another parenthesis we have a square plus 3a 
plus 9, minus a, and minus, minus 3. Really great. And right now, let's uh, right here we can easily uh, do the things with this a and with this with this constant. Yeah, we can we can actually subtract nine minus three, and we can actually subtract three a minus a. As a result, what can we uh, what can we get from here? We have a minus three right here, a minus three, and in another parenthesis we have a square from here, three a minus a plus two a, and nine minus three we have we have six, so plus six plus six equal to equal to zero. Okay, so we can actually say that, okay, we factor our question. We have a product of two parentheses. And from algebraic perspective, a product of two parentheses equal to zero when first parenthesis is equal to zero. So we have a minus three equal to zero. Or the second parenthesis is equal to zero. This parenthesis is equal to zero. So we have a square plus two a and plus six is equal to zero. So we have a product of two parentheses and this parenthesis is equal to zero or this one equal to zero. And you know, we can easily solve it without any problems because this is our linear function. So we can write that our a equal to three. So our a first equal to three. We can easily solve this instantly. A first equal to three. This is our one real, real number, uh, real number root. What about this equation? This is a quadratic equation. And right now let's solve it. Of course, this is up to you. I'm going to use the basic method, a uh, method of coefficients right here. So our a equal to one, b equal to two, b equal to two, and c equal to, c equal to six. And right now let's find our discriminant or do you prefer solving uh, exactly our uh, n second and uh, a second and a third? This is up to you. Of course, uh, let's start, for example, with discriminant, you know, let's do it. So b square minus four a c equal to b square. So we have two square minus four times a times one times c times Six. And as a result from here, we have four minus 24. So our discriminant equal to minus 20, so it's less than zero. So it means that uh, right here we have two complex roots. Okay, two complex, uh, two complex roots. Okay, so we have only one real number root. And right now let's, let's find our, uh, our complex roots. So right here we have a second and a third. Yeah, let's do it. So we have a second and third equal to minus b plus minus square root of discriminant and all over to a all known formula and let's plug in each of these elements into this spot so minus b we have minus 2 plus minus square root of discriminant square root of minus 20 and all over to a all over 2 times 2 times 1 and right now what do we have minus 2 plus minus square root of minus 20. We can easily express this minus 20 as a product. So let's do it like that. So four times five and times minus one. We can easily write it like that and all over, all over two. Really great. And in the end, let's simplify our square root right here because we can actually split it. We can write it as minus two plus minus. We can write it as a square root of four times square root of five and times square root of minus, minus one all over all over two. So this is like a square root property. So I really hope you understand it. We can split it like only with the multiplication and division. It's not work. It doesn't work with the with addition and subtraction. Okay, square root of four equal to two and square root of minus one, this is our imaginary unit. This is our i. So as a result, we have minus two plus minus two i square root of five over over two. What are we going to do next? Of course, we can easily cancel these two from here, or we can rewrite it if you don't understand what I, what I mean right now. We can write it as minus 2 over 2 plus minus 2i square root of 5 over 2. We can split it like that. And uh, after this, we can say, okay, right here, our real part equal to minus 1 uh, plus minus. Right here, our imaginary part, i square root of 5. So this is our real part. This is our imaginary part. If you're interested in this, uh, like in, in this, um, in this part, when we split it by real part and imaginary part. Okay, let's write our final answer to this question. Let's do it right here. So our answer, our answer, our answer to this question. Let's let's split it. Let's separate it. So we have a first equal to three, and a second and third equal to minus one plus minus i square root of five. So these two roots are complex roots and this one is real, real number root. 
So we can say that this is our solution to this question. In the end, let's check real quick our a first equal to equal to three. So let's do it right here because I don't have enough space. So a cube minus a square equal to 18. And right now let's plug in a equal to three. So we have three cube minus three square equal to equal to 18. Okay, really great. And right now we have 27 minus 9 equal to 18. Everything, everything is great. This is our, this is a correct, a correct root. So everything, everything is great. So right now, once more, we have three roots. And uh, one really interesting hint, because a lot of students might be thinking, okay, maybe only one root, because I can solve it instantly. A lot of students might be thinking a equal to three, this is one and only one root. But according to a fundamental theorem of algebra, every time you have an equation, for example, on your exam or a homework, just scan what is the highest power. Right here we have three as the highest power. So it means that we have three roots in total. And exactly that case we have in our answer. We have uh, three roots in total, one real, two complex. It can be like two complex complex one real one real two real one one complex a lot of a lot of combinations but one really important moment every time you have an equation just scan what is the highest power and the next step you're gonna you're gonna solve this equation of course but this is like a quick proof for you because when you have three it means three rules even right here we have quadratic equation it means two roots. Right here we have it, yeah, two roots. Linear equation with the first power as the highest power, it means one root. So this is like a quick tip, quick important reminder for you that every time you have an equation you just need to scan what is the highest power because sometimes you forget about roots. A lot of students may be thinking a cubed minus a square equal to 18, a equal to 3 by inspection method and this is our answer. But with this method, with this part, you forget about complex roots because if you solve this question by inspection you can't find these uh, this part with the with the complex um, with the complex numbers which is extremely important part because then after this you can easily say okay i solved this question completely maybe sometimes you just need a graph you just need a plot but it depends on where do you what do you study how do you study math but this is a full answer uh, to this question so my quick recommendation just learn this fundamental theorem of algebra and just scan um, equations in terms of this in terms of this part so once more a solution to this question we have a cubic equation we have uh, this part tricky part and then all you need to do you need to learn you need to remember these two formulas and after this basic basic calculations in the end two equations linear and a quadratic equation so i really hope you understand it but if you still have any question write a question in the comments below it will be really interesting to read about it if you still have any question about this solution maybe you you don't understand like where do we have plus minus or uh, or other different things it's also really interesting and really great when you leave your respond and everyone will help you because we have a, a really great community um, including teachers students here I see that and my uh, YouTube channel it's also really great uh, to see you here and I really appreciate that you watch this video on this channel we have like more than 600 videos so it's also really really great and it really in inspires me a lot when we are talking about about knowledge about algebra that we are, have a really big uh, community and it's also really great that you're here and you support um, this uh, type of content i really appreciate it so if you do you can easily um, write your response leave a like if you if you if this video is helpful in any way it's also really uh, high, highly appreciated yeah so wish all the best in life, take care of yourself and have a great day. See you in the next videos.